you survived your work day, your rush hour commute, and you are ready to just kick back and unwind. Put your favorite slippers on, make your favorite drink, and join me, King Kevin, for the Cocktail Hour with King Kevin. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Cocktail Hour. I am your host, King Kevin, and your bartender. And as you guys can already see, I am sitting here with our special guest. So let me give you a, a formal introduction, and then we're going to jump into this, all right? Okay. All right. So our guest today is, like myself, a Philly native who was brought up with music all around him. Um, although, as a child growing up, Julian was in love with working with animals and wanted to be a veterinarian, um, he, uh, let me read it instead of trying to say it from the top of my head. Um, um, he discovered his passion for music and moved full steam ahead. Julian attended the famed high school, Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts, then went to receive his BA in vocal performance from the Philadelphia University of the Arts. After being a contestant on The Voice, Julian went on to release his debut album, Made in China. In December 2020, he released his EP, Takeout, which included collaborations with Mayor, uh, Jess Frankie, Kimberly J, Sean Sounds, Kevin, Jay-Z Prodigy, Precious, and Brayla. Uh, Julian is a dancer. I don't know if, I wanna, if I'm saying this wrong. I want to say a pianist, but I noticed you play. Pianist. You're a pianist, but I made you laugh. But above all, he's an artist. Um, in 2022, Julian released um, several singles. Mm -hmm. um, I think we said that it was just the one you were telling me about, but he, he released several singles such as Bring It Back, Nasty, and the acclaimed single, Can We Go Back? So welcome to the Cocktail Hour with King Kevin, Julian King. Thank you. So this is what happens when two kings get together. <laughs> so um, before we get into the conversation, let's take a look at Can We Can we Go Back? And then we're going to talk about it. We're going to drink. I'll let you guys know what we're drinking and go from there. All right. It's over. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still not over you. I should have told you. I was too emotional to open up and talk to. Now, who are you talking to? Give me a monster view. Is he worth building with and tearing down what we've been through? Tell me my second chance is still in someone's bed. Instead of getting dressed and fighting for the love we had I wanna love you more and get past arguments Relive the moments when the passion was just that intense, yeah Can we go back to what we had in the past? Forget who started first and work on making it last, yeah Can we go back before emotions collapse And I see you at your worst, preferred you at your best, yeah can we go back? Can we go back? Can we go back? Can we go back? Yeah, yeah. Can we go back? Can we go back? Can we go back? Can we go back? Yeah, yeah. You know that I needed you the most, and I know you've never been a fool. I just wanna make sure that you have anything you could ever want. I just wanna be here for a while. Loving you feels better every day. I know you wanna be her down and baby, you gon' be. And you know this, just like that, baby, I'ma always have your back. Do you know this? Do you know that? You can always count on me. But the thing about this, when it gets like that, I need only true that bad. Don't you lie to me, and that's on everything. So can we go back to what we had in the past? Forget who started first and work on making it last. Yeah, can we go back to where emotions collapse and I sing you at your worst, preferred you at your best? Yeah, can we go back? 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 
Take me, take me, take me back. Um, Julian, before we get into this, let's toast because it let's is the it. cocktail hour. Let's do it. So usually I like to I've drink. waited all day for this moment. I'm gonna give you the one without the melted water ice. So I appreciate it. This is called a dark envy. Oh. And it has tequila, 1800, it has pineapple juice, it has lemonade, and it has uh blueberry water ice or Italian ice if you're not from Philly. Okay. In Philly, we call it water ice. Water ice, thank you. Because <laughs> we're from Philly. So cheers to you. Cheers. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. So I didn't give you a table to put it on. Oh, she's house. cute. Yep. Okay. So let's go right into the can we go back? Mm -hmm. Um, because it's not just the song. You um where do you pull from when you write? <sighs> okay, back then I pulled from people. Lately, I've been pulling from niggas. And it's interesting because back then I was just writing very open music. Mm -hmm. um, but now this is the first time in my life that these songs are a direct reflection of like guys that I was talking to. Um, and in this song, Can We Go Back in particular, I was dealing with a guy um, here in the city during the pandemic and Every day we were together for three and a half weeks. So back then, I don't know if you've dated anyone during the pandemic, but like things were going faster than they normally did because there was nowhere else to go. Yeah. And you got to those like deeper conversations quicker and you spent so much time together. Can I pause um, you real quick? Huh? Can I pause you yeah. real quick? During the pandemic, my relationship fell apart. Okay. So um, yeah, it did, and it did move just that quickly too, just in the opposite direction. No, like, I mean, at that three and a half week mark, I was like cooking for him and like wow. washing his clothes. It was like weird. <laughs> it was like weird. So so he made an impression on you. He did. And you guys he got did. really that close. That was my really little thing. It was. But then all of a sudden he went to out of town and um <laughs> he kind of ghosted me. And leading up to that point and even at that point, I was realizing what was going on and I'm just like fuck. Like I what can I go this? We here already. Sorry. I'm like, dang, like I really I wish we could go back to when it was yeah. like a week and a half when it, we just was like, um, and that's how the song was birthed. And I wrote it not thinking that it would become like a thing for not just me and my healing from that situation, but like other guys. It was crazy. Um, I was just telling you that you inspired me to the last and I, I saw that and I want to swat it. Oh, that's so. okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would probably sweet. go to the sweater too, no shade. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, so the last time actually um was with you, we you you we weren't necessarily having a specific conversation. We were mm -hmm. just chilling, bobbing with other people around, and um you were going over some music, but then you started talking. And a lot of people always see the face. Mm -hmm. of the artist but when you see the passion of the artist it makes it a little different mm -hmm. and you were um one your creativity is crazy yeah, I think. but you wanted to you were talking about possibly doing something for the community and i know a lot of people have to be pride into okay we're calling people together to do the aids walk or to do this or to do that but your heart was like no this is let's do something for the community i don't want it to look like what we've seen already um, and it may not even be something that you uh, you want to talk about right now, but the point in me saying it is seeing your heart and seeing your passion beyond just the music it, that really inspired me. Oh, so thank you. I just wanted to encourage you to start with that, with like keep doing what you're doing, stay who you are. Um, you're here for a reason. Thank you. Retrograde or not, because <laughs> <laughs> baby, she has been on me not. heavy. Um, I, I was talking to somebody 
today actually about how like even those negative moments in our life can still work out. I have a statement that says I learned to appreciate the good and the bad because even in the bad, it brings out the best in me. Mm. So wow, yeah. So that's true. Yeah, retro grade may be kicking our ass right now, but remember that there's good coming from that. I believe that. Um, now just to go back, what can we go back? Mm -hmm. Um, you, we were talking about this is the first time that you released music that really spoke to who you are versus yeah. just having something so open. It's, it makes it so much more specific. Yeah, it's in a unfortunately somewhat of a, a specific genre when you talk about same gender loving situations because mm -hmm. it's easy to make it a blanket statement say baby you they or whatever but when you specifically as a man say something about another man we just watched the video can we go back and clearly that's the man that you're talking it to. was super empowering okay like, i was about to ask you about yeah that. it was it was super empowering i the day that the video and the song came out i was actually filming that uh timberland campaign okay. that you just spoke of and I didn't really get a chance to sit in what was happening. Yeah. But I felt like a lot of men that looked like me, and I say that in quotation marks, they felt seen. Yeah. And they felt like, wow, beyond the turn up, beyond the twerking, beyond the super gay moments that yes. we love, that we all have, my deepest emotions about a guy, there's actually music and a video and i like it and right. it makes me feel good in the video shot in a very cinematic way i feel yes. like i was in the relationship and i like i didn't get to experience that growing up so like i didn't really realize the magnitude of what was happening and it was a bit overwhelming mm -hmm. um but it was so freeing and, re and rewarding to be in a space where i could really just okay yeah i'm talking about niggas mm -hmm. like we're going through the same shit that y'all are going through, which is exactly. wild. Y'all think exactly. we're not. Well, y'all think we go through different experiences, but like we love, we cry, we fight. Yep. We're happy, we're shocked, we're surprised. Um, empowering, yeah, that's all I can think of. Um, it's also representation. Um, I think that society puts a, a label on what a black gay man should look like. Mm -hmm. And I think you defy that. So mm -hmm. it, it, it does more than just show um, it's more than just good music, but there, like I said, there's representation. Um, and I feel like, I'm so glad you said that because I feel like I try so hard to speak from my perspective, but also incorporate others yes. uh, through the music, contextually, lyrically, sonically, mm -hmm. just have it different. Like there's niggas who I know probably won't listen to Can We Go Back, but they gonna listen to Nasty. Or, oh, yeah. <laughs> or like bring it back might not be their tea, but going do is yes. And visually to be able to show it all, show my more masculine side, show my more feminine sides. I believe that my masculine and my feminine operate and exist very like cohesively. Yes. And so being able to show the mirage of perspectives in just me alone allows a larger group of men like me to be seen. Exactly. Um, who that was a lot, but that was really. <laughs> but just to interject, because like I said, there is a, a specific image that we see on media of a black gay man, and a lot of times, most times, he's that overly flamboyant mm -hmm. or feminine Super man. sassy, yes, yeah, sassy girlfriend. That, and mm -hmm. I'm be honest with you, I don't have a problem with that type of person, but mm -hmm. that's not the makeup of the of the of, me, that's not the makeup of the entire community. Yeah, or majority of it. Like when yes. I when I thought about this video. I was like, okay, no shade. It doesn't matter what people choose to do, but the average black gay man is not wearing heels, wearing leotards, right. wearing nails and hair and all that. They are like the very men in this room, t-shirts, jeans, slides, yeah. socks, yeah. like average men. And I wanted to show in the video, which is why versus who Julian is outside of that video, it was a very dulled, dimmed version of who I am stylistically because I just wanted, you know, people to be seen and it to feel like something that they can relate to. Right. But you know what? The flip side is like I'm looking at your nails, which I love. Thank you. Those are things that when we were younger, 
we would have gotten in trouble for it. Absolutely. So the idea that I can be a masculine man and still be in touch with my feminine side, mm -hmm. that, that's what that, that does for me. Huh. Um, also, I like- Mission accomplished. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It, it, it lets me know that, look, I don't have to hide who I am. Yeah. I don't I don't have to, like, I'm not, I'm the type of person, I don't parade it, but I don't need to hide it. And then also when you say like, I don't need to hide it, it's also not just all of your feminine too. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, I feel like, Someone saying I don't I'm glad I don't have to hide who I am could just be them loving to wear the color pink or like them exactly. loving to like exactly. shave their underarms. Just, I don't know, it looks stupid. Right. Stuff, but like yeah. Um I'm a visual artist, as you can see. I painted that by the way, one of my favorite paintings. Wow. Self portrait. Anyway. Um <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no. I see um, what you did there. Visual artist, right? So I love the cinematography in this video and the symbol and the symbolism in it. Thank you. Um, because like I noticed in the beginning of the video, like you guys were so in sync with everything, and I saw the change, then the lighting changed, and he wow. was on one thing, and you I'm telling you, I paid attention. I you would have thought that you were in our meetings. Are you serious? And we're reading the mood board. Yeah, because I, well, that means the, that you guys did a great job because I got it. The original idea was we were supposed to have like strings actually attached, and we were supposed to be like yo-yoing the same. Wow. As like a well, world. to some extent you were. But we were, but we were. yeah, it just wasn't as like messy. But yeah. yeah. No, I, I think that, wow. that was that's crazy. I like listen, I paid attention to that. Again, visually, I like that's what I see. So are you family watching? Is your family watching? Oh, I'm not sure. If you are I mean, but they cool because I'm about to I'm about to talk about myself. Oh yeah. Talk about that part. Go ahead. Um so I watch adult I watch porn, but when I, I think watch we all do. But I do it a little differently, I guess okay. because I create it. When I watch it, I don't watch it like, oh, I need to get off. I'm looking at like the way, like if someone puts some production value into what they're doing, I'm all mm. in this. I mean, obviously it's not just porn, it's like visually any type of art, but like I like to pick stuff apart. Wow. So when I see something where the continuity is good, the cinematography, the story without even hearing the words, I could see the story. Right, right, right. Great job. Wow. Thank you. Great job. I. Okay, so I chose to film it in film for that specific reason. It does it automatically. Yes. I feel like that did majority of the work. Um, and then it was just on us to kind of tell that story. And I'm I, I'm I'm happy and elated that you actually received that from the video. Because yeah. that was our intent. Good. To and, show that. And opposed um, to some of your other videos where you have an ensemble cast. You, mm -hmm. It's just the two of you guys. And you guys are yeah. telling a full story. And it's beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Yes. Thank you so much. Definitely. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Good, good. So, um, again, there's so much to talk about. <clears throat> you are an openly gay performer or mm -hmm. artist. Um, what made you get to the point of saying, you know what? This is who I am. I'm going to tell because you could be an artist because we know that there are artists who are great as artists and that's it. And there's nothing, mm -hmm. no shade that they don't tell their, their, uh, their stories like that. What made you share? Okay, this answer is kind of twofold. Can I explain both? Sure. Okay, so um, there was a point in 2016 where my managers at the time were pretty much like, "Yo, you gotta get these faggots out of here. Like, they can't be, they can't be backstage. It's not a good look, bro." Mm -hmm. And at the time, like those group of faggots were my friends, right? And my ex was a part of that right. at the time. Like nobody really knew we were dating. And that night I went home and I cried and I said, yo, this this actually can't be my life. Right. I, I actually choose not to be 39, 45, 68 and unhappy. Right. Um, and I know that it might affect some things, but at least I will be more empowered. And the very things that I feel like the team that I was working with at the time thought I didn't possess or couldn't really grasp. I can because over here it's more mm -hmm. me. Um, went to China, came back, and was kind of just like, all right, I feel like I've been living this life. Um, and I really thought about China. Like, I thought about what I wanted, who, how I wanted people to perceive me, what type of person I was, what kind of music I wanted to put out. And that, that's why I named that project Made in China, because I really feel like I was remade wow. into like who I was always in, intended to be. Um, but another point that really like forced me to just open up more 
we have this little thing in my cousin's group chat where like We'll be like, oh, we have each other's locations. So I'll be like, oh, I see you're at El Camino. What am I doing? Oh, I'm at home. Wow, I would have loved to have gone. Right. Like little right. little stuff like that to kind of like tell each other we love each other and like wow. we really want to spend time. But there was a point in 2018 where I was having a conversation with my brothers and my cousins and they were kind of just like, well, I mean, like, we don't know anything about your day life, but you don't say anything. Or like, wow, I mean, like, oh, okay, you went on a date. Oh, I wonder how that was. You know, like little stuff like that. And I'm like, wow. At that point, there was a part of me who my family knew. And there was a part of me that, who my friends knew. And I never really realized that they wanted to know each other. Shocking. Wow. And so I was like, okay. So I started little by little. And now, like, I talk to my stepmom about dudes I'm dating. And nice. all my cousins have gone to level up with me nice so you know it's it's an interesting space to be in and i i think that the overwhelming part about this whole entire process too is yes i am experienced in my gay life uh both privately and publicly mm -hmm. but like so much is still new to me i i'm i the past three years i just learned about ballroom and i'm just now joining a house and like really embracing that part of That's something like, you could talk about yeah we could talk about that right. um i'm just now learning a lot and exploring the the parameters of what i am interested in and what i engage in and how i allow that to influence my art and who i am as a person which is actually been like a really cool place to be and i feel like i'm in a sandbox so, um but yeah cool. um i definitely want to talk about ballroom let's do it um i'm trying to think if i want to do it in this order though because you're talking a lot about family mm -hmm. and um family is one of those things that's really important um there's there is um a comparison though however from our biological families and then ballroom where we have our chosen families mm -hmm. um a lot of people aren't as blessed as you are because you have you have to be blessed yes you are definitely blessed very much um I was on YouTube one day and I came across a video of you actually interviewing your mother. Mm -hmm. And there was a question that you asked her and I loved her response. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about the fact that I'm gay? It's like, my son. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about my gay son, Julian. It was just my son. Yeah. Um, what, did, like, did you have fear or did you have any type of hesitation when coming out? And then once you see not just your mom, but your siblings, your cousins, and I like uncles or aunts or like, what was that like after you said, okay, this is who I am and I want to share it with you guys. Okay, so the only part that scared me, I guess, wow, this is the first time I'm like vocalizing this. The only part that really scared me, I guess, was my career it was giving very much, uh, I know what you want to try to do, but uh, we not there. Mm -hmm. And um, you got this team of people who you're working with who have already birthed superstars. So there's pressure to follow up from that. But there was a point in which it was not, it was not working. And um, I'm so grateful that I'm finally in a place where, hmm, where I'm kind of like running the show. Like the team that I work with now, I couldn't be more blessed to have them because they too not only have the same credentials and then some. But all of what you see is a reflection of what I wanted. Um, and it was scary leading up into this point. And it was um, like, I was, I, I was really only scared about my career aspect. I wasn't necessarily scared about my family and what they thought. Can, um, I, can I ask what gave you comfort with saying, hey, family, this is it. And like, not think twice about it versus, the, like, I, I do understand okay, the career. Okay. Like, with the family, what made it so comfortable for you? Okay, no shade. It was really given, all right, y'all, 
Y'all really want to know? Y'all, y'all really? Okay. This is what it is. And it's given very much y'all get with the program or y'all mm-hmm. don't. And I think in doing it in that way was different than like, hey, guys. So yeah. I think, I, which a lot of people struggle, like they don't, not a lot of people don't have that oomph to be able to like, it's either y'all take it or y'all don't. Like right. I, at this point, after spending a year in China by myself, I can't, I can't, I can no longer do this. Right. Um, so this is what it is. And they notes. all really respected me for it. Yes. Um, I think it also helped that I just wasn't like, sitting on my behind not doing anything all day and just kind of like being not really making anything of myself mm-hmm. um so i i just got off the television show i just got off a tour i'm dancing for a really big bollywood artist i'm doing i'm back and forth like it was a lot going on so it was a they kind of saw who i was and i guess where it could go um and respected that i stood in it mm-hmm. um because we got we have a lot of strong strong personalities in my family so the fact that i stood in it and it was given very much okay y'all like you know one thing my mom said in that interview that she watched about both me and my sister Mm -hmm. is that she really thought to herself and losing us in totality Mm -hmm. isn't worth standing on a a oi right oh i just (laughs) dis There's a lot I disagree about that a lot of people do. Exactly. But if it's not causing physical harm or killing anyone or doing anything where it might put them in harm or whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. I let you be. You're grown right. and you know what you're doing. Um, and I just was so grateful that a lot of my family members, especially my brother, who was like my unofficial best friend, nice. um, they they see how much stronger I am. And I was already strong, but they see that I'm even stronger and happier. And um, they feel like they finally, we get to talk about real stuff. Yes. Like yes. we get to really talk about like the differences in our relationships. And they ask me all the questions all the time about dating and the balls and even sex and like they 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 want to know just as much mm-hmm. as I want like to share with them. So it's been a really interesting journey up until this point, but I don't think that there's anything that um I couldn't talk to my cousins about. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Um I'm hearing what you're saying and it's like a totality. It's like a whole I'll talk about being holistic mm-hmm. all the time and hearing you it's like your career is a part of you. Your sexuality or sexual identity, mm. as you will, is a part of you. But to be able to marry this and this and this, the ballroom, the music, the family, the personal life, like that's that's the whole point of this. Oh, it's like, been a blessing. It, it's been a blessing. Even my father, who through Made in China, everyone realized that I just met three years ago. Three years ago. That was something else I discovered come, about you last time we came. Coming checked. in like July, August-ish, July. So, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, that just was like, that That was already big in my life. Mm-hmm. But the fact that he not only wanted to be there and wanted mm-hmm. to like, I just got a call from the nigga the other day and he was like mad that I didn't call him and ask him for something that I needed. And I just, I, like I gagged when I got the phone. I'm just like, wow, this is really my life. And I, I'm really like, talking to my parents about my dating life and it's shown through my art and it's like it's almost as if people respect me even more Mm -hmm. because they don't really have a choice but to respect the actual credibility of the art and Mm -hmm. the goodness I guess that comes with that but also the person standing in front of that art and being able to um relate too because that's another thing I it's a very hard task I feel like I'm trying to do. Okay. Because what? I'm not looking to be a gay superhero. Actually, what I'm looking to be 
is more of like a bridge between like our community and like other communities. Mm -hmm. I'm not even just talking about like straight or black, but like a bridge outside of our worlds and for the world and to get the world to realize that outside of all of the things that people think are gay, there's a lot that we actually can relate to. Exactly. Like we all gotta worry about like taking the trash out and we all have kids, whether they biologically come for us or right. come from us or not. We all know about paying rent. Mm -hmm. We all know about, you know, whatever right. it is. Like right. there's so much more that we could be worrying about. And I guess in order for me, in my mind, in order for us to get the respect from other communities, we have to create art that goes above and beyond and really like makes some believers. Yeah, I think something that you said is, is the point and it's taking the power. Mm -hmm. um, there's asking for permission and then it's, I'm telling you who I am. I'm not gonna ask permission to be me. And I think like as a community, the more we do that, the stronger we become. Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, cause I drink and <laughs> and the pre-show made me a little happy. So let me pull no. my brain back in. It's, in. it's interesting having this conversation with you now because of just where I am in my life and like what's to come. Um, a lot of this is my first time like vocalizing it. So I appreciate the space that you're creating because it's, it's allowing me to like kind of really think back on. So I'm, I'm trying to be impact. careful not to, because like I, I use the word holistic. I don't want to just feature, oh, well, he's a gay artist because mm -hmm. clearly you're way more than that. Um, but we do celebrate the fact that you are, you stand in your truth. Yeah. I'm a... I, the way I see myself is I just think that I'm a really talented artist exactly. who like just so happens to, to be gay. gay. Exactly. And you, you actually talk about it. Um, again, I think it's back to, I'm not actually mission. I stand in my truth and that's what it is. When, when you were writing your music, what is that process? I saw you and I'm like, <laughs> all right, but damn, I, I wish I could do like that. Cause it was like, uh, Wow, okay. I, see, I don't know if you paid attention to my face, but I'm like, I was high too, but mm -hmm. still. It it's like, interesting. Wow. Um, most times, it starts with the, the music. Um, a lot of my records, I actually wrote fried because um, I, I get super inspired, which is probably why I smoke weed and I love it so much. Um, <laughs> but it starts with like, okay, for instance, nasty. Nasty me and Dorian were in my room, smoking, chilling. And I was just going through beats um, because Dorian is also a very creative person. He gets very um, creatively turned on by processes. So I, I always include him in like yes. the beginning processes. And we were just listening to pro the music and we came across that and we kept saying like, oh, this, this shit kind of hard, okay. And then it was given, mm, I like them dancing. I like them dancing. And we just kept going. So I laid it down and I had it on a loop. And then for me, it starts melody. I get inspired by the beat and I'm like, okay, how is this making me feel? Okay. And then from there, I lay down the melody, which is all mumbles. And then I listen to the mumble. And in the mumble, they're like words that are like scattered. It's almost like, um, what's that show? Is it Wheel of Fortune where the girl has like, Man is there a White W? The... Is yes, there an E? Yes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of those will actually already be filled in. I like that. And I kind of like fill in the story. I still, there's still a format of the story that leads up to the chorus, but I kind of use those words that I'm already using to tell the story because in my mind, I lead with melody first because if it feels like a song that I already know, but just forgot the lyrics to, then it's going to resonate with people. Wow. Um, and there's probably songs that you absolutely love that you can't think of the lyrics that I was just to ask you right now. Right. And so you can sing the melody. Yeah, That's the one thing people can hold on to, even without words. 
So it starts with the melody first, and then I add the words, and then I spend time with it, and then you get a record. That is awesome. You taught me something today. Thank you. <laughs> of um, I'm I, first of all, I'm doing horrible because I am like dropping my questions left. Oh, and it's okay. Right. Um, we were talking about your your music and your process of creating. Um, it sounds psychological because mm -hmm. that I, I write that way but not with music like with the book or with, with like a screen with screen place i know where the story's going i know highlights within it but me being a psychological person that i am when you were saying the whole will of fortune thing like there are certain i love wow. that process how psychological okay. do you get because you feel i feel your music mm -hmm. so it's like the emotional side but the intellectual side so for you i mean now it's just fun it's super fun yeah. because i'm really like and I love that the gay experience, which is probably why there's all of the colors in the world in the rainbow, mm -hmm. uh, because there's so many types of gay. Gay is done, just like straight is done so many different ways, gay is done too. Yeah. I know guys that are the hardest and I know guys that are the softest and it doesn't make one right. more right or wrong. So the fact that I get to create music in a space that allows me to like, be crazy in love beyonce kitty cat beyonce smash into you beyonce love on top beyonce yeah like all of the beyonce's Sorry. from like <laughs> and put together in a project oh it's so much fun though yeah. so now you kind of like led me to something i wanted to ask you oh but who's your favorite artist <laughs> and it may not be beyonce but i get Had what you, you were saying asked 16 17 year old julian it would have definitely been Beyonce. <laughs> now I'm growing, I'm growing up and I'm getting older. And there was a point around 2013, 14, that like I was struggling in my beehiveness <laughs> because there's just certain things I can't relate to. Okay, that's I don't, I will never know, even if I decide to transition, I will never know what it feels like to have an actual factual kitty cat. Right. I will never know what it means to be a single lady. Got it. I don't never. I will never understand like certain thing. I, I don't have a freakum dress. Even if I buy a dress, I'm. It's still not going to be a freakum dress. Right. From your perspective, because right. I just can't relate to that. And that was when I started drifting a little off and trying to like expand my mm -hmm. influences. Um, and so now I'm really impacted by people who have great melodies, people who have great mm -hmm. tones. Um, they're very metaphoric in their lyrical approach. Um, and the song is just good, which is why All Time Low was just one of my favorite songs at the time, because it's just a good song. Right. <laughs> so is there a, a artist or, or a collective of artists that you'd like to listen to that influence? Like, yeah, does it, yes. does it influence your sound or does it influence the stories? These people influence not only my sound, but I also hope to one day work with them. Um, Coldplay, mm -hmm. Kevin Michael, Kiara Sheard, Jasmine Sullivan, Trey Songs, Prince. Um, yeah. Yeah, Faith Evans, Blue Cantrell. Wow. Um, Mario, like these are people who bring the inner Julian so much happiness. And I hope to pay it back by doing something with them or honoring them at some point or whatever the case may be. Because it's so crazy. We all have this gift that's not really ours because it's on us to be able to share it with the that's world. The and yes. like, thank you for that. So the fact that there's I'm receiving from people and it's pouring out to others like man that's such a good feeling see I honestly I'm trying not to get into the preachy phase but literally that's what it is um I have a quote in my book that says the best experience we have or the most fulfilling experience isn't the love that we receive but the love that we give mm -hmm. um I remember I had a situation where I had to do community service and it just hit me I'm I'm standing in this homeless shelter preparing food to feed people. And when you just do it because you're supposed to do it and you don't connect to it, 
it's like, oh gosh, I wish I ever get this over with. But when I started to see people file in and see their faces to know that they had a meal, it's like, yo, it's, I feel so gratified, but I felt selfish for being gratified because all I did was be used to help yeah. someone else out. But it really is one of the best feelings in the world when yes. you can be selfless and give of yourself freely. Our interests are just like those vehicles that get us in those rooms, but mm -hmm. like the real purpose is what we do in those rooms. Yes. And it just so happens. And I'm so like grateful that mine is just through music exactly. and dancing exactly. and performing and like yep. being myself and and kikiing and being an uncle to like younger generation. Like that that there's so much more than just like Yes, I like some of the finer things in life. I love really good cuts of steak. Yes. I love jewelry. I love to keep myself groomed properly. Mm -hmm. I love expensive cars. And I hope to one day wear the finest cloths that this earth can provide. But outside of that, like the actual purpose mm -hmm. of it all is to touch people, which is why I'm not really looking to be like a gay superhero. Right. Maybe if I become a superhero, maybe the community will give that to me. But I, I'm not going to deem myself that. I'm more concerned about, like, if I'm only making music for me and my friends, then how does it reach other people? I was just about to say that. How, 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 the problem that I was having with Black gay music, and it wasn't the people specifically. It just was the climate of where it all was. Mm -hmm. When you think of Black gay music, you think of RuPaul, Big Frida, Tadra Call. Now Saucy, now Little Nas. These are all very specific. Like if I were yeah. to take a magnifying glass and look at the gay community is giving this, right? Yeah. But when the gays go through their heartbreaks and things like that, or they just got the biggest bag, who do they listen to? They listen to like, Niggas like the mainstream R&B and hip hop. And rap girls. Yeah. yeah and the actual R girls, not like R &B Beyonce, R &B. Brandy, Nicki, Remy Lotto, um, Megan, Pops, Georgia, Meg, like, girl, like I haven't named not well now. There's different interpretations and people are growing. Okay, but <laughs> none of them were a part of the LGBT community, right? And that was a problem. That was a big problem. So I strive to create music that like is not only good and audible and real mm -hmm. to who I am mm -hmm. as a member of this community, but that's also digestible to members right. that are outside of the community. Right. I want my little sister and her girlfriend to listen to Bring It Back. Right. The same way I want my brother and his new girl, or whenever that happens, to listen to that. Nasty is, na one of the, the guys who wanted Nasty to come out the most was actually a straight man. Wow. Um, but that's the point, good music is good music. And yeah. um, as you said, we have, so much in common i think people like build so many fences and walls to separate us and we buy into it not to realize how simple like if we really got back to like the base of everything we're all human we all shit we all piss we all bleed we, we all need sleep we all need food we all need to drink water and it sounds so simple but at the end of the day those are the things that connect us and i think that we shouldn't so i'm glad that you said it so that we don't lose our humanity. That's one of the main good. things that attracted me to ballroom. Good. There's so many different, like, <laughs> even when I think about categories at balls, one category will have like 13 subcategories. Realness. School me because there's I'm so many different types. I'm not versed. I'm, I'm familiar with that. All right. Versed. So, realness. Realness is a category that. You pretty much walk and you need to give very real to whatever that subcategory is. So it could be thug realness, school real, schoolboy realness, pretty boy realness, whatever. And you need to look like this category and like be able to pull this off. And if you can, you get your sins. If you don't, you get a chop pretty much. And even in that one category, I swear to God, it's like 13 to 17 subcategories and it takes a long time, but like, that's the part that I love about ballroom is that there's so many different perspectives and point of views right. in a space that allows us to be able to um, subconsciously like learn from each other. Like you got hard ass niggas and you got femme queens. 
queens. You got super feminine butch queens, and you got more masculine butch queens. You got it's so much and so much in ballroom that I'm even inspired by now, um, which kind of led me to finally joining a house and being officially in ballroom. Although I feel like I've unofficially been in ballroom for about three, four years, um, and even if even in my time in ballroom. I've made quite the impression and I've actually never even walked myself. Cause that, I was going to ask you like, if you don't mind saying yes. which house are you part of and which, uh, which your category? Uh, so I am in the house of Supreme Montclair. Okay. Under Jason Montclair. Okay. Um, and I originally joined the house for camaraderie and family and like fellowship. Like that was the main reason why like I kind of, Jason was asking about the house and trying to da da da, da but I kind of waited because mm-hmm. for me, I needed to really ask myself why I wanted to join. And it was for family. Now, eventually, I will be commentating. Okay. And eventually, I'm a, I'm a natural dancer and I want I to move. I so that. I need to learn how to like properly vogue, which allegedly my brother's supposed to be helping me with so we're going to see if it's uh, actually man, this man over here we're going to see you. if it's going to actually happen if he's teaching you we ain't got to listen he's about to be a whole <laughs> freaking storm but yeah through. those are the things that i most naturally gravitate to um and those are the things that i'm going to put my energy in outside of supporting and being there for my house and my family i want to go back to your family real quick um I mentioned it before the show. You mentioned it maybe once or twice since we've been speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, back in February, Black History Month, mm-hmm. you did an ad for Timberland. Yes. Um, what made you um, decide to say, you know what, I want to bring the family in on this one? Well, actually, my uncle brought me into the project. Oh, wow. Um, and then it started like more and more and more family members started being a part of it. Um, but what really got me was what it was about. It was a Black History Month campaign about seeing the soul. And no matter, like, even my family, it's a maraud of perspectives in that family. And all of it was shown. Um, And at the end of the day, regardless of who we choose to love or who we choose to pray to or, like, what we do, Mm -hmm. we have an obligation to people to, like, see each other and to just support each other as best as possible. Um, And I loved that that was what that whole project was about. Um, And it was really powerful because me and my family, the last thing I did with my family was film a, uh, what do you call it? A Will Smith music video here in Philly. That, no, 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 (laughs) no. I did that with my family. Cause at the time we were really close with the Smith family and stuff like that. but that was the very first time we really got to do something together creatively and artistically outside wait, of so like you mean like the original praise worship. You mean like wait, you mean the, the original get jiggy with it music video? Yeah, oh, I'm in it. Wow. Now I gotta go back and watch it. Yeah, I'm in it. I'll tell you exactly where I have a lime green like hat on and it has two little vessels coming out with pom poms. Uh, yeah, it was I'm cold. cold. <laughs> But um, yeah, so it's like it's the the family for me. It's the opportunity that you guys create. Not so, I'm a little bit familiar with your family from my childhood because mm-hmm. of like church and things like that. Um, but you guys, like you say, it doesn't matter who, what religion you practice or who you love. You guys create platforms to empower people, and that's what your music does, what your platform does. And thank you. Um, I, I live by three E's to entertain, educate, and empower. I feel like anyone who encounters me needs to have at least one out of the three, if not all three. Wow. And it feels good to connect with other artists, other people who carry similar values. So wow. um, I love that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we are getting very close to the end of our hour. How is mm. we going too fast? I know. I feel like we've been here for 20 minutes. I know, right? <laughs> I, I want to ask you, what, what are you looking forward to next? Okay, so lately I've just had time to really be still. Mm-hmm. Um, I just most recently got done celebrating my mom's 50th birthday in Atlanta. Happy birthday, Happy birthday mom. And... I most recently just officially joined the House of Supreme Montclair 
and I plus my roommates, we celebrated all of my birthdays. Like I kind of had a very dormant time, but I look forward to getting back to singing and performing and like touching the people. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to Moby Fest in New York City yes, on June 11th. On Thank you so much. Uh, June 11th, it is the first in three years being back in person. Yeah. Um, which I'm excited for Sean, because sure what's up. a lot of my friends are on the lineup. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be a great queer, warm space. Yes. <laughs> and I'm excited to be in that. Um, and then I'm also going to St. Louis for Work Fest. Okay. July 17th. I know <laughs> St. Louis, my first time. Really? Um, yeah, but I'm really excited um, to not only go there for the first time, but also to experience Pride there. Um, so I've been there. I've never been to the Pride. Never. I've never I've been. I've never been. So but that's something to put on I have a friend from St. Louis, and allegedly they get down. So I can imagine. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited for a really, really, really good time. Um, and I have a slew of other gigs between now and um, September. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I'm also working on the project. I, I was just about to get into that because I know you've given us a few um, singles already. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, um, a release? Or you, you just I'm gonna collect my music first and then. So what I've been doing lately, um, there were a lot of things that happened last summer that just happened unexpectedly. Okay. Like, was not expecting to go viral for that Double Dutch video that I posted on Twitter. Like, never saw that happen. You can jump though. I can't, I used to be that girl. You used to be. No, 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 like, I mean, I'm a little older now. <laughs> like, baby, the POW League in Philly knows about me. I wasn't playing basketball. I was like jumping rope and slaying the girls. You it was crazy. I watched that video, and the only, I think the only reason why you stopped because the girl on this one side looked like she got tired of turning the rope. Well, they also got tired. But by the time we shot that video, I had I shoot them. I shoot them about five six rounds. Oh wow! And then I finally was like, "All right, I'm about to go, y'all. Let's do one more time." And then I asked my best friend Steph to um, record. But that was an unexpected moment. Um, I wasn't expecting to be published in Vogue. I wasn't expecting, like shit to happen mm -hmm. that like kind of pushed the envelope a lot sooner yeah. so i released gone do which is still that girl to me and one of my favorite records it's actually about the boy about can we go back yeah like same, who that's about situation. yeah how many songs did he inspire um he actually inspired four yeah because I, I think you somewhere you were talking about you know in the i heard the story already mm -hmm. I, and i heard a couple of songs but i didn't know how many yeah um he inspired four records um the other two i'm not sure if they're gonna come out okay um because i'm don't i'm not sure if they actually need to come out i knew that gone do need to come out and i knew that can we go back and need to come out i'm glad that they did number yeah. one certain songs become soundtracks yeah um actually one of them might come out it's called one in a why and it was the moment i realized i was ghosted and for okay. me, like, I I, that needs to come out. for me, I'm an Aquarius, and y'all already know we're not that emotional. We choose to be emotional. Um, <laughs> and I I was like, wow. <laughs> okay, bro, you got that one. <laughs> you drew that. <laughs> but now I need to know why. Because yeah, I don't like the I fact that you got, you got a one of them. I want to talk about relationship and how you navigate relationships, dating, Let's and stuff it. like that. Like, can you do this in two minutes? Let's do it. So yeah, um, let's skip the the courting phase, or whatever. When you decide, okay, we're in a relationship now, or you guys collectively decide, oh, we're in a relationship. How do you deal with situations? Like, are you supposed to talk on the phone all day? Do you text? Is it a no, move-in no. situation? Do y'all? I think it also depends on the person and who you're talking to. But me specifically, like, if I know I'm gonna see you every night, I'm coming to your crib, but you come to mine. I don't need to talk to you all day. I would love for a cute text like, yo, good morning, like kill that shit today. Cause the niggas know I'm gonna be in rehearsal, studio, right, traveling here, right. on a plane, da, 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 da. I would like to end my day with you so that I have the day to talk about. Um, and then after being away for two, three weeks, okay, now I wanna see you for like four days, five right. weeks. That's <laughs> so, it. But other than that, like I, I'm not very high maintenance. So someone ghosted you. Mm -hmm. Why would someone ghost you? Um, <laughs> you know, I realized that's okay. 
when it first happened, like most people, like all of us, I internalized it. Um, maybe I'm not ugly enough. Maybe I'm not, my body isn't how I've he wants. Maybe before. I'm like. I've never heard that before. I'm not, maybe I'm not ugly enough. Oh, maybe I'm not like. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. No, 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 yeah, sorry. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm ugly or maybe I don't have this or maybe he doesn't like the colors I wear. Maybe my room is too this. Or I don't know. I started like internalizing it. But um, I realized after waiting. So when I first got ghosted, I waited like 13 days. And then I aired him out. And then he apologized 48 hours later. And everything that I thought it was, it was. And then some. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized that situation had absolutely nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. And when people ghost you, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them and what they're going through and their insecurities and what they thought they signed up for and what they signed up for and didn't know came with. Right. It has everything to do. Which with now them. takes me to you have a, a full career, you, like you said, rehearsals, traveling, just like your own creative space, even if you're mm -hmm. at home. How do you get to actually get into a relationship with somebody who understands what comes with it? Um, or at least have a an inkling or a clue as to what to expect. Usually talking to Julian starts off with very staggered communication. Because I need to I need to understand how you react when you don't talk to me for mm. this amount of hours or oh you didn't talk to me last night. Are you chewing me in the morning or are you right. like, damn it, you must have been like you must have been right. tired. How was right. rehearsal? Exactly. So it usually starts off with a very staggered conversation and usually if, if a guy can handle that um, I, I'm not gonna like purposefully make you wait right. six hours for a text message back, but like it usually gives very much this, as most Aquarius are. And then from there, it gives very much. Hmm, okay, it's been a few weeks. Like I, I'm starting to like this. And from there, if it gets there, now sometimes you meet a guy like when I met the Kim and Go Back guy. <laughs> I hate that title. <laughs> um, we talked for seven hours in person. Wow. So it, so he had already. He had already, when you get me here, oh, you got me. And he got me. And then, boom, it was just a race. Right. But I, I am open to dating right now. I'm in a space that I'm trying to do a lot and accomplish a lot. Is it hard to juggle? Is it hard to manage? I like I, I have my own things going on. And I know what the schedule is like. Yeah, because sometimes emotion, I, I forget that other people have feelings, too. And, like, mm -hmm. I, I'll be like, well, damn, I, like, I've been traveling. And you're like, oh, I want to see you, like. If I'm feeling you, it affects me. If it doesn't, it turns me off. So it, it just depends. Um, I can I can be very standoffish when it comes to that. And eventually I would like to be in a relationship, but for now. We got you. And you got a yeah. good circle of people around. And I have a really cute puppy. I'm chilling. Yes, you do. I'm chilling. I'll, do too. I'll introduce you to, to Thor afterwards. Okay. Um, real quick before we end, because we have to close it up. Where can people find you? Uh, you guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. At it's Julian King, I T S J U L I A N K I N G, um, and then two G's on TikTok. Nice. Thank you. I, I can't thank you enough. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. My invitation. Of and course. Here with me. I apologize. We had to reschedule. No, it's Seriously. fine. It's fine. You're here. Yes, we're here, and it's been a great conversation. I'm more than sure it won't be our last. It won't. So it won't. let's let's. Commit, not right Cheers now. Cheers to whatever I have left. Right. Well, we're we, we, uh, close. Uh, Actually, I, I feel like I beat you. You, you are. <laughs> Thank you for having me, though. Seriously. No, sir, not anytime. Anytime. Um, so, if you guys haven't already, make sure you go to follow him on all of his platforms. So, if you go to my website, kevinm.com, and you look at who my guests are, there is a space for Julian. Mm -hmm. I have okay. a space on my website for you. Wow. And I'll, just plug, I'll plug in your your handle. Social. There. Okay. Yeah, so that way, um, if you guys want to go, the website will be attached to the description. Make sure you guys are liking, leave us our comments. Um, subscribe if you haven't already to Facebook and to my YouTube. Um, catch up on all of our guests coming up. Actually, next week, I'm going to have Aaron Thomas on the show. Oh, so, no. Yeah, so we're trying. And you know, the, what, is it the week after that? We got that I have Jackie on the show. <gasps> Oh, yeah, those are so, both friends of mine. Yeah, so we're going, we're going to have a lot of fun the next couple of weeks. Actually, no, after Aaron, it's my birthday week. Okay. So we're doing a birthday special, and then Jakey is following that. But one way or another, stay tuned, because we got a lot of great show for you. And we'll get some more of Julian. If you guys have not already started streaming his music, please go stream his new single. The, the new one is actually Nasty. Mm -hmm. That's the latest one that you released. That's the latest one. And well, there will be one soon. 
go on to wherever you stream your music, look up Julian King and su support stream. It, it, you won't be disappointed. Oh my gosh. YouTube, go look at his videos. You will not be disappointed. I appreciate that. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Me. If you were driving, you've been drinking, get home safe and we'll talk to you next week. Love you guys.